Okay, thank you. So this talk will be about Schnorr signatures, uh, which is probably one of the best known examples of the fiat shamir heuristic, which turns an identification scheme into a signature scheme. And so before I uh, describe the Schnorr signature scheme, let me just give the context of this uh, uh, work. So Schnorr signatures are proven secure under the discrete logarithm assumption uh, in the random uh, oracle model that has been proven by uh, Poincheval and Stern with what is known as the forking lemma. And uh, an unfortunate property of this reduction is that it uh, loses a factor QH, where QH is the number of uh, random oracle queries of the forger. And uh, this can potentially be very large because when, once you instantiate your random worker, the adversary can make uh, kind of queries offline. So. Um, and so previous results showed that losing some factor was uh, somehow unavoidable. So I will uh, precise later what this means. But uh, the first paper who proved uh, such kind of result was by Payet and Bernier. And they proved that losing a, a QH to the one half factor was unavoidable. And later, Garg, Baskar, and Locam proved that losing a factor QH to the two third was uh, somehow unavoidable. So, um, the state before this paper was we had a gap between uh, the security reduction with the forking lemma and the best uh, impossibility result by, uh, by Garg et al. And so, in this paper, we show that in fact losing a, a factor QH is unavoidable, therefore closing the, back, the gap between the forking lemma and previous impossibility results. So the outline of my talk will be as follows. So first I will recall Schnorr signatures and the forking lemma. Then I will explain what is a meta reduction. So in fact, a meta reduction is the tool we will use to prove this impossibility result. And then I will finally explain the, the main result of the paper. So first, Schnorr signatures. So some uh, notations, so uh, G will be a cyclic group of prime order Q, and uh, we'll take a generator G of this group. And so the secret key for uh, the Schnorr signature scheme is simply an integer, modulo Q, and the public key will be uh, simply uh, G to the X, uh, and I will denote it big X. And in uh, all the talk, uh, capital letter will be group elements, and uh, lowercase letter will be uh, integers, modulo Q. And so to sign a message M, so you uh, choose a random integer, modulo Q, and you compute G to the A. Uh, I will call this the commitment in, by analogy with the uh, corresponding identification scheme. Then you compute uh, something I will call the challenge by applying a hash function to the message and the commitment A. And finally, you compute the answer, which will be simply A plus CX mod Q, and the signature is uh, the copper uh, SC. And to verify uh, a message and its uh, signature SC, you first recover the group element A by computing G to the S, X to the minus C. And so if the signature is correct, you recover what you, you should, and you simply check that uh, the hash function applied to the message N A is equal to C. And so here, uh, the hash function will be modeled as a random oracle which I will denote by uh, using a bold font. So in this talk, we will focus on universal forgery under no message attacks. So uh, the adversary is given a message M and a public key X, and it must return a forgery for this message, and it cannot make a signature queries. So this is the weakest, kind of the weakest possible notion for a security notion for a signature. But since we are um, dealing with an impossibility result, this only makes the result stronger, in fact. So we'll stick with this uh, uh, model. And uh, in the talk, the uh, random tape of the forger will be explicitly denoted by omega, okay? So the input to uh, the forger will be a message M, a public key X, and some random tape, okay? And now you can see the forger as a deterministic algorithm. This will be important. Um, and so uh, parameters characterizing a forger will be its running time, TF, its success probability, epsilon f, from which you can form the time to success ratio, rho f equals to tf divided by uh, uh, the success probability, and also its maximal number of queries to the random oracle, which would be denoted qh. And so now we have this deterministic algorithm here, taking this input, making at most qh uh, queries to the random oracle, and outputting some forgery for uh, the message n. And, um, 
In the talk, I will use uh, an important pictorial representation of a forgery experiment as follows. So the first node here will uh, simply denote the, start, the, the beginning of the forgery experiment. Then uh, the first vertex is labeled with the input to the, for, to the forger here. And since the forger is not deterministic, its first query, A, uh, A1, its first commitment is uh, determined, okay? And so here, the first, uh, this represents, in fact, the first random oracle query. So I, don't, I do not denote the message. You can forget the message here because I will assume that all uh, queries to the random oracle are related to the message M. Clearly, if it makes a uh, random oracle query for another message, it will not help the forger. So here, I do not denote the message, but this is uh, the random oracle query MA1. And so it can receive uh, Q possible answers from the random oracle. And once this answer C1 is fixed, the second uh, commitment of the forger is fixed. I will denote it A2, etc., until the last uh, random oracle query AQH. And once all these queries have been made, uh, the forger will return some forgery, okay, for one of these queries. So we don't know which one, but I will circle in the, uh, in, among all these QH queries, the query for which uh, the forger returns a forgery, if it returns one. Okay, and here, so the forgery is SLCL with SL is equal to the discrete log of AL times the public key to the CL. So uh, let me explain now the uh, classical uh, reduction for uh, Schnorr signatures. So given a forger F here, one can build, one can build a reduction R uh, which solves the discrete logarithm problem for the public key using the forger as a black box. Okay, and so now I will, uh, so I will switch from a random oracle to uh, a random oracle simulated by the reduction. This is why I, I denoted R.H. It is to emphasize that now the random oracle is simulated by the, redu by the reduction. Okay, so the reduction receives some input X and it has to uh, output the discrete log of, of, of X. And for this, it will use the forger. So it will give some message, uh, we don't care, and the public key to the forger. And the main idea is uh, that the reduction will have the forger output two forgeries, S1, C1, and S2, C2, for the same message M and the same commitment, big A equals G to the A. And if you succeed in do it, doing this, then we, you will have these two relations between S1, C1, and S2, and C2. And the small a here can be removed, and we, you can compute the discrete logarithm, small x of the public key. So now, how does the reduction obtain, obtain these two forgeries for the same commitment? This is what is, has been called by Pochevalister and Stern a replay attack. So first, you run um, uh, random exp forgery experiments with the forger until it returns some, uh, some forgery for one of its random oracle queries, okay? And once you, you found this first forgery, then you will replay the same attack up to the forgery point, point, meaning that we, you will reuse the same message, the same public key, and the same random tape, using the same, again, the same random oracle answers, okay? And once you arrive to this uh, particular query for which um, it's returned uh, a first forgery, then you start using new random oracle uh, answers, okay? So you don't know uh, which uh, query the, the forger will use to, to return its, its next forgery, but you just keep doing this, hoping that at some point, it will return again a new forgery for the same commitment in the same random oracle query. And once this happens, you have your two forgeries for the same commitment, and you can uh, compute, uh, as I just explained, the discrete logarithm of the public key. Okay, and so, um, when you analyze the, so the working lemma is really analyzing the probability that this strategy is su successful. And so it's quite easy to see that to ex obtain the first forgery with constant probability, you have to run the forger roughly one over epsilon f, its success probability times. And then to obtain the second forgery, you can show that uh, to obtain the second forgery with con constant probability, you have to run the forger qh divided by epsilon f times. So it's not really uh, surprising because now you're looking for a forgery for a particular uh, uh, query among QH lines. So this is why this factor here uh, appears. And so if you do the computations, uh, you can see that, uh, in fact, the time to success ratio of the reduction, or R, is QH time worse than the, uh, the one of the forger. So 
this, this reduction uses a factor QH, okay? And uh, we don't know any matching uh, attack. The best known attack is uh, computing discrete logarithm. So a natural question is if there are better reduction with a time to success ratio closer to the one of the forger. Okay. So now we'll explain the way we'll prove we cannot uh, improve this uh, reduction. And this, is, this will be with what I will call a meta reduction. So what's the concept of a meta reduction? So the first and very important example is by Bonnet and Fenkatezan, uh, who showed that if there is an algebraic, so I will explain in a few minutes why, what, what this means, uh, reduction R from factoring to solving the RSA problem with small uh, public exponents, then you can uh, start from this reduction and build another algorithm, which would be called a meta reduction, which uses this reduction to factor RSA moduli directly without using any oracle. So this means that algebraic reductions from, from factoring to breaking low exponent RSA um, exponents cannot exist unless factoring is uh, or, uh, already easy, in fact. And so here we will uh, do uh, something similar. We will show that so an algebraic reduction from the discrete logarithm problem to forging Schnorr signatures cannot be tied. So we we will not show that it cannot exist because we just saw it exist, but we will show that it cannot be tight unless some other problem, namely the one more discrete logarithm problem, is easy. So before I explain the main how we do this, let me, let me explain what is uh, first the one more uh, discrete logarithm problem and then what is an algebraic reduction. So the one more discrete lo logarithm problem is simply an extension of the discrete logarithm problem where the solver here receives uh, n plus one uh, challenges, group elements, okay? And it has to return the discrete log of all these n plus one uh, elements. And for this, it can query a discrete log oracle, but at most n times, okay? So if you know how to solve the discrete logarithm problem, then clearly you can solve uh, the one more discrete logarithm problem, but we don't have any uh, reduction in the other way around. So maybe this is uh, simpler than the discrete logarithm problem, but we don't have any hint in this direction. So for now, the best uh, uh, way to solve this one more discrete logarithm problem is to solve uh, the discrete logarithm problem, in fact. And so, as I said, we will restrict, restrict us to, the, to algebraic reduction. So an algebraic al uh, algorithm, uh, it's an algorithm which, in, uh, in fact, only applies group operations to group elements which are input to, to this algorithm. So a consequence, in fact, which we will use in this talk is that there exists some procedure extract which, given the group elements input to the reduction, to R, uh, the code of R and its random tape and any group elements output by the, by the algorithm will extract, in fact, some um, uh, here exponents such that the output can be expressed in this base G1 to GK. And in fact, this does not seem to be a very restrictive uh, uh, assumption because all, all reductions I know for discrete log-based uh, crypto systems are in fact algebraic, in, partic in particular the reduction of pressure balance term. So what would be the, the, the strategy for the meta reduction? So we start from a, a reduction, okay, which uh, takes as input a, a group element and outputs the and must output the discrete log of these elements by using a forger here, and uh, we will assume that it calls the forger at most n times, okay? And here, again, the forger makes at most QH queries to uh, the random oracle simulated by the reduction. And now what we will add in the picture is a third algorithm here, which will be the meta reduction, so which will take, uh, so this is an algorithm for the one more discrete logarithm problem, so it takes as input n plus one uh, uh, group elements, and in fact, it will use one to, as input to the reduction, and then it will simulate, so the reduction here expects uh, access to, to a forger, so it will uh, uh, run some experiments with a forger, and the meta reduction will simulate the forger to the reduction using its discrete log oracle, in fact. So, so we started from a situation where we have a forger and a random oracle, and now we don't have any forger, we don't have any random oracle, we, we have a meta reduction simulating the forger and a reduction simulating the random oracle here. And, okay. So, 
the general strategy for, for the meta reduction, so it receives this n plus one group elements, and it will, it will use one of these elements as input to the reduction, okay? And then it will use the remaining ones, the re n remaining elements, to build uh, some, commitment, some commitments here, okay? Using some exponents which are known to the, to the meta reduction, okay? And for each simulation, uh, the meta reduction will choose some forgery index. So I will discuss the choice later because this is really the important point. And it will use its disc discrete log oracle to forge a signature, okay? If it has access to this disc discrete log oracle, so it can forge uh, a signature simply by querying the discrete log of these elements here, okay? And if the reduction succeeds in returning the, the discrete log of uh, its input, A0, and unless some bad event happens, so I will explain what this bad event is, and the meta reduction will be able to use A0 and all the uh, signatures it has forged to retrieve the discrete logarithm of AI. So how does it work? It is exactly where we need the assumption that uh, the reduction is algebraic. In fact, if the simulation of the forger is okay, then the reduction will return the discrete logarithm of A0. And now, th so the meta reduction must use A0 and the forged signatures SICI to compute the discrete log of AI. But the forgery was computed with uh, as the discrete log of AI to, the, to some exponent beta times XI to the CI, where XI is the uh, input public key that was received from, from the reduction. So now we can see that computing the discrete log of AI is equivalent to computing the discrete log of the input public key XI. And so this is where we need the restriction to algebraic reductions because the group elements uh, which are input to the reduction, there, there is only the generator G and the input A0. So if we restrict ourselves to uh, algebraic reductions, then the extract procedure will give you two exponents uh, which enables the meta reduction to uh, express the public key XI uh, as a function of G and A0. And if the reduction returns the discrete log of A0, then you can compute here the discrete logarithm of the public key. And once you have the discrete logarithm of the public key, you can compute the discrete logarithm of the uh, challenge AI. Okay, so what we have uh, achieved here is we have, a, uh, we started from our reduction, okay, from, uh, forging, from discrete logarithm to forging Schnorr signatures, and we, we have obtained a meta reduction which solves the one more discrete logarithm problem directly. So it seems like we have run into a contradiction because uh, if we assume that the uh, one more discrete logarithm is hard, then such a meta reduction cannot exist. But in fact, there is. Uh, a bad event which may happen at, and which will make the, the, um, the meta reduction uh, fail. And in fact, uh, it's exactly as in, the, in the forking lemma. The reduction can choose to uh, make two simulations uh, share some common history. And so, in fact, uh, if some uh, execution forks from a, a previous one at the forgery point, uh, then it ca the, the meta reduction can start using the next challenge only from this point here. So if it forges a signature uh, for some later query here, it's okay. But if it forges again a signature for, for the same query, then it will make a useless call to the discrete log oracle because it, will, it won't help the meta reduction to, to, to retrieve the discrete logarithm of a new challenge element. And not su surprisingly, this is exactly the event which makes uh, the reduction succeed in the forking lemma, okay? So the, this event, which makes the reduction succeed in the forking lemma, is the event which will, will make the meta reduction fail to solve the one more discrete logarithm problem. And so if we don't want to run into a contradiction, then uh, it must be that the probability of this bad event is equal to one. Otherwise, uh, the meta reduction will be an efficient and successful alg algorithm for the one more discrete logarithm problem. Okay, so uh, in fact, the, so now we know that the probability of this bad event must be one, and this probability is uh, determined by how the meta reduction chooses the, for, the forgery index for each simulation, okay? And somehow you must do this randomly. If you choose to forge for the first random oracle query for the first execution, and then for the second random oracle query for the second execution, and, and so on, then the reduction will see that a simulation is going on because this is not something that would happen with a real forger. So 
the choice must, must be somehow random. And so a natural choice is to draw this uh, uh, forgery index randomly among one and QH, independently for each execution. And this is exactly what's done, uh, what was done in previous uh, um, works. And so, um, in fact, a straightforward analysis shows you that, uh, the, uh, in this case, just by computing the collision probability, the probability of this bad event is roughly n squared where, uh, over QH, where n is the number of times the, the reduction when the forger. And so this tells you that to have a bad event which happens with probability nearly one, then uh, the, re the reduction must run the forger at least QH to the one half times. And with a more careful uh, analysis, you can uh, obtain this bound for the probability of bad, which implies that uh, the number of times the, f the f uh, reduction runs the, run the forger must be QH to the two third. So finally, I come to the main result, which is uh, proving an optimal bound, an optimal loss factor QH. And so, so yeah, the main theorem is that any algebraic reduction from the biscuit log problem to forging Schnorr signatures must lose the factor QH in its time to success ratio, assuming the one more discrete logarithm problem is hard. And so in fact, for, for, it depends on whether you, you uh, consider strictly bounded adversaries or expected times uh, and queries adversaries. So in, for strictly bounded adversaries, you, you, yeah, there is a small dependency for, uh, uh, in uh, epsilon f here. And so um, the proof of this result, uh, we will simply modify how the uh, meta reduction chooses the, the forgery index here. And so the way it's, it chooses uh, this uh, forgery index can be described like this. So we'll do some kind of uh, thought experiment. So we'll consider, consider the following uh, hypothetic forger f. So the, the group is, will be partitioned into two sets, uh, some set gamma good of, si of size uh, mu g, okay, for which the forger can, can compute discrete logs efficiently, and some set gamma bad, okay, the remaining elements for which the forger cannot compute uh, discrete logs for, for this set. And to forge a signature for, for some message, the forger will make arbitrary random oracle queries, and it will return a forgery for the first query such that AI times X to the CI is in this set gamma good for which you can compute discrete logarithms, okay? And if there is no such query, it will simply fa fail to forge. And in fact, it's, it's quite easy to, to link uh, the uh, success probability of this forger with this parameter mu here, because for each query, it will uh, not be in gamma good with probability one minus mu, so if it makes QH queries here, you obtain this formula here. And we'll call such a forger a new good forger. And so uh, what the new meta reduction does, it's, it's, it, in fact, it will simulate a new good forger, but kind of lazily, meaning that it will build this set gamma good and gamma bad dynamically and randomly during the, uh, the simulation of the, the forger. Um, so, uh, I don't have time to really enter into the details, but each time it, 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 uh, it comes with a, with a new, uh, with a fresh element, it will draw a random coin and with some, with the parameter mu here. And uh, if it's equal to one, it will put this element in gamma good. And if it's equal to zero, it will put this element in gamma bad. And um, since, it has, since the meta reduction has access to some uh, discrete log oracle, it will simply compute the uh, discrete log of the elements which are put in gamma good by uh, querying this oracle. And so you can note that now the, uh, it's easy to see that now the forgery index is, de is distributed according to uh, some truncated geometric distribution. Um, so I will don't have time to, to go through the, the, the demonstration, but uh, now the important point is that uh, the probability of the, of the bad event uh, which I described uh, just before. Now it will be something which is roughly n divided by QH. So if you want to have the probability of this bad event equal to one, then the fo you, you need to have n e roughly equal to Q Q QH so that the, the reduction must run the forger QH times. Um, so yeah, very quickly, in fact, uh, it's much easier to analyze this with expected uh, time and queries forgers and uh, uh, in this case, uh, you get uh, that the reduction must lose a factor of QH independent, independently of the uh, success of the, um, of the forger. Um, 
this can be uh, extended, so uh, notably f you can extend it to any uh, signature scheme built from uh, a one-way group hom of homomorphism. So in particular, this applies to Ryu Kuskater uh, signatures. And you can extend it also to some variants of Schnorr signatures. So in, uh, my conclusion uh, will be that um, the bottom line is that the forking lemma is optimal, at least for black box and algebraic predictions. And so um, the, and my interpretation is more that uh, this points out limitation of black box uh, reduction te techniques rather than a real gap between, uh, rather than a real hardness gap. But this is just a gut feeling and I cannot prove anything regarding this. And so some open problems. Uh, so the mon most important one is what, what about arbitrary reductions, not non-algebraic, okay? What about non-black box reductions? And can we uh, get a tight reduction to uh, another problem for Schnorr signature? And uh, finally, can we build an, e an efficient signature scheme with a tight reduction to the discrete log problem? This, this seems like a, a kind of uh, exception because we have tight reductions to plenty of other problems, but not the discrete logarithm. So even in the, in the random local model. So why? I don't know. Okay, thanks. We have time for a quick question. If not, then let's thank Yannick again.